find, yes. Let me just... Got it. Just do this. All right. Now, today we're going to look at chapter 17. Um, we have, I think, 33 verse. verses. Yeah, 33 verses. Oh, uh, no, 34. So, um, can... Uh, I, um, Marilyn, you want to read? I'll let Marilyn read. Um, if it's 34 verses. Uh, Marilyn, you read from verse 1 to 11. Who wants to read second? I'll read second. I see. Oh. Um, I heard um, Marilyn's number two. No, well, I don't know who's number one or number two, but the second. <laughs> Marilyn, I, Marilyn asked. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, Mar Marilyn M will read 1 to 11. Marilyn S will read 12. Um, when he won. And who wants to read 22 to the end? Oh, uh, Bryce. Bryce will read I'll 22, read, to, I'll read 22 to the end. Okay, all right, let's go. In Thessalonica, when they had passed through Am Amatholus and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As his custom was, Paul went into the synagogue, and on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and prov proving that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ, he said. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and not a few prominent women. But the Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out into the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other brothers before the city officials, shouting, these men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decrees, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. When they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. As soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, where they received a message they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Many of them believed and many Greek women of high social standing and many Greek men also believed. But when the Jews in Thessalonica heard what Paul had preached, the word of God in Berea also, they came here and started exciting and stirring up the mobs. At once the believer sent Paul away to the coast. Both Silas and Timothy stayed in Berea. The men who were taking Paul went with him as far as Athens and then returned to Berea with instructions from Paul that Silas and Timothy should join him as soon as possible. While Paul was waiting in Athens for Silas and Timothy, he was greatly upset when he noticed how full of idols the city was. So he held discussions in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentiles who worshiped God and also in the public square every day with the people who happened to come by. Certain Epicurean and Stoic teachers also debated with him. Some of them asked, why is this ignorant show off trying, what is this ignorant show off trying to say? Others answered, he seems to be talking about foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching about Jesus and the resurrection. So they took Paul, brought him before the city council, the Areopagus, and said, we would like to do 
we would like to know what this new teaching is that you are talking about. Some of the things we hear you say sound strange to us, and we would like to know what they mean. For all the citizens of Athens and the foreigners who live there like to spend all their time telling and hearing the latest new thing. Who, who, who does 23 Rice. now? Rice. Oh, I do. <clears throat> For I was passing through and observing the objects of, of your worship. Even I found an altar on which was inscribed to an unknown God. Therefore, what, what was worship is ignorance. This I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it. He is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by hands. Neither he is served by human hands. As though he needed anything, since he himself gives everyone life and breathe all things. From one man, he has made every nationality to live over the whole earth and has determined their appointed times and the boundaries of where they live. He did this so that they might seek God and perhaps they might reach out and find him. Through he is not far as even some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offsprings. Since we are God's offsprings, then, we shouldn't think that the dividing nature is like gold or silver or stone, an image of fashion by human art, imagination. Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God now commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has set a date when he is going to judge the world in righteousness by the man he has appointed. He is providing proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some began to recall him. But others said, we like to hear from, from you again about this. So Paul left their presence. However, some people joined him and believed, including Donathlius, the Acropolitan, a woman named Demetrius, and others with them. Okay, thank you. Can you all hear me well? Yes. yes. Because I try to put on my headset, but it tells me it needs charging, so I probably did not put it down properly the last time I used it, so, um, so thank you. Um, good to see you, Silas. Okay, now what we see happening here in chapter 17 is, um, is that we find that Paul and Silas and Timothy as well, um, although he is not named at this point, um, that they pass through and Phipolis and Apollonia, and they went to Thessalonica. And so they are in Thessalonica um, um, to spread the word. And what happens is, is that both Paul and Silas came to a synagogue um, in Thessalonica to preach the gospel. Um, and it's obviously, if it's a synagogue, it is a Jewish synagogue. And we see in verse two, as his custom was, Peter, Paul, sorry, Paul went into the synagogue, on, on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures. And, and we, we see that, that Paul, he goes into the synagogue as he had done earlier. And, um, and he is more or less, um, some translations, you even use a strong word as argue. He was arguing the scriptures. He was reasoning um, with those the, the 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 Jewish uh, religious leaders um, from the scriptures and verse three says explaining and proving that Christ 
explaining and proving that what does it say that that Christ that suffered and rise from the dead that Ryan says the Messiah okay the you Christ. say the Messiah and some say the Christ the Christ remember I always emphasize the Christ he is the Christ and not like Jesus Christ he's, Christ is not his last name the, the, the word the Christ or the Messiah, they're the same. They both mean the anointed one. That's what Christ means. That's what Messiah means. Um, I cannot remember now which is which, but there are two different languages meaning the same word. One is Greek and one is Hebrew. Um, I think the Christ is Hebrew and the Greek and the other one is Greek or something. I don't remember right now. But, um, but I just want to emphasize that which is the reason for the pause that I make between Jesus and Christ, because he's Jesus the Christ and not Jesus Christ, as in a last, as is, if it was his last name. So we see here explaining and proving that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. So what Paul is telling them is, is that Jesus, um, uh, that the scriptures that Jesus that we are talking about is, is the one who came from God, and who needed to, and who died and suffered, who suffered and died and rose um, from the dead. Uh, and, 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 and I want you to also realize that, as we all know, Peter in the first half of the book was ministering strictly to Jews, um, and converting Jews into Christianity. Here we see Paul is still doing the same thing. He, the, because the, 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 the custom is, the method of going is to first go to the Jews to convert them first. So the first thing Paul does is each time he goes to a synagogue first. Um, uh, if we remember, I think it was in chapter 16, he also, he, he also went um, uh, to the synagogue there. So, so, so he goes to the synagogue first to explain about who Jesus is and why it is important to follow the Christian religion. Um, um, the, uh, when he was in Philippi, there are no synagogues in Philippi, so we never heard that he went to a synagogue there. And then what he does is, is that he takes the opportunity to preach in a synagogue for three weeks, or at least for a period of time. And this is something that was common, where a leader of a synagogue invite visiting rabbis to share the word um, uh, when they were traveling through. And, um, and obviously, Paul's reputation had preceded him. And, but his focus of teaching is on the Messiah, is on the Christ. Um, and, and, and what he's trying to say is what he would be like or what he was like and, and that Jesus was the, the promised and the awaited Messiah. Um, when, we, when, we, when we get into verse 4, you read that some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and a if, and if few prominent women. Um, and, 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 and what this tells you is, is that some of the Jews, they were persuaded to follow him. They, they were persuaded to, to, to start embracing this message that Paul was expounding. And, 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 and so you find that some of them were persuaded. Like anything else, some will be persuaded, some will not be persuaded. And, and it's still the same today. Some people are for the word, some people are not. Some people think it's the most powerful thing. Some people think it's total rubbish. So you you have you have here the Jew, some Jews being persuaded to follow Paul and Silas. Also, too, some devout Greeks responded as well, who will be Gentiles. So there were some Jews, there were some Gentiles, and there were a few of the leading women. Um, who joined the ranks of them. And, and obviously it, it would appear that the, when it says prominent women, obviously these were pretty well-to-do women um, in, in society. Um, but then it goes on to fit verse five, but the Jews were jealous. So they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason 
and some other brothers before the city's officials shouting, these men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decree, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. And when they heard this, the crowds and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. So, 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 although some of the Jews were persuaded, obviously some of the Jews were not. And 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 you realize that. Obviously, some of these people would have been Jewish leaders who came against, who came out against them. And just imagine the picture. You, here is it, you're a religious, a Jewish religious leader, a Jewish leader. And you got people like Paul and, Bar and, and Silas who are taking members of your flock. Uh, the Jews are becoming Christians. So they're taking them away from Judaism. And so these, um, these uh, leaders would not have liked that they were against them and and it was a pattern that was that became common where you know those who were Jews and wanted to stick strictly to Judaism they became envied envious they were jealous um they opposed Paul and Silas because they did not like what they were teaching and then they and then what they do is they form alliances um with others they didn't care who they were and my translation say some bad characters from the marketplace. Yours might say something else. If you got a King James Virgin, they say certain lewd fellows of the baser sort, um, um, meaning that they were, <laughs> meaning that they were not the kind of people with whom you want to associate. Strictly, mm -hmm. strictly, uh, that they got up, that they chose to form this mob and to start a riot in the city. Now you hear about this person, Jason. So if you never knew that Jason was a biblical name, now you know. Mm -hmm. um, 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 uh, and, and this Jason, the church refers to him as St. Jason of Thessalonica, because that's where he was from. The Roman church celebrates him. The, the, the Episcopal church does not. I think the Orthodox church does. Um, um, and a couple other, I think the Coptic church does as well. Um, but in our calendar, we do not celebrate St. Jay, Jason. Um, but Jason is found in this chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. And he's also found in, in, in Romans. I was trying to think which chapter in Romans. I, I think he, I, oh gosh, I think he is. I don't have it. <sighs> Hmm. I don't see. Love it. Where does James appear in the Book of Romans? He appears in the Ro he, he appears in Romans, huh? Try three twenty four. Romans three twenty four. Let's see. Romans three twenty four. Or two seventeen, maybe. Three twenty four. No, he's not there. All right, he's not there either. Did you two, try two seventeen? Two seventeen. I got five. No, he's not there either. Oh, okay. No, wait a minute. I I tried asking Siri. Well, Syrian very. Oh, gosh, I thought I had. Wait a minute. Oh, Romans sixteen twenty one. I think that's where he is. So it's towards the end. Romans 16, 21. Let's see if I'm right. Okay, near the very end, 21. It's at the very end. Yes, yeah, 16, 21. Is 16, 21? Timothy, mm -hmm. my fellow worker. Right, he's mentioned there. In yes. Jesus' name, he's mentioned there. In Romans 16, 21. Um, so those are the two parts where you see Jason mentioned in Romans 16, 21 and in Acts chapter 17. But he was, but what, what, what he really was is that Jason, um, he was a Jewish, he was Jew, and he became a Christian believer. He was an early Christian believer. And so when these men came, he would have already believed in Christianity. That is why he decided to, to welcome them into his home and to house them. Um, and in fact, when you think of this story, when they went and they dragged him out, 
it almost reminds you of the story with Lot, who who took the um, who excuse me that was Abraham's who, nephew, right? Who was willing to hand over his daughters uh, to the guys who who to, to the people who came, um, thinking that there were uh, that um, for the for to the, the the people in the area in the community wanted him to let these men out that had come to his home. But that was very foolish of what Lot did. Yeah. But the thing is about it. Very dumb thing, what he did too. All right, all right, all right, Bryce. But the thing about it is, <laughs> the thing about the thing about it is, is that in, in this situation, uh, they did not find Paul and Silas. And so what they do, we are told, is is that they brought Jason and some other brothers before the city count city officials. Um and they're and they were saying about how Paul and Silas, these men have caused trouble all over the world, meaning Paul and Silas have now come here and Jason has welcomed them into his house. And they are defying Caesar's decree saying that there's another king um, named Jesus. And you know, once you hear that there's another king, that is going to cause a big uproar because the only king that got is Caesar. And, and to hear that there's another king, it causes great uproar among the people. Um, uh, um, and 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 we find then um, that that Pete, that Paul and Silas, when they heard this, the town, uh, the crowd, and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the others post bond and let them go. So they were able to post bond um, and and go. But once we see, once we read in verse 10, as soon as it was night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, again, you see they went into the synagogue. So, mm -hmm. so, so as to avoid violence within the city of Thessalonica, you see Paul and Silas moves on. They, they, they do not stay to be combative or to force the gospel um, down people's throats. And this is something I was telling the group this morning that, you know, if we are talking to someone about the scriptures and they're not interested, you just move on. It is it is what Jesus did. Jesus told his disciples, you know, if they don't receive you, move on. Um, do not, you are not supposed to pressure people um, um, into sharing the word. Um, and this is even something that we were talking about this morning in, in terms of some folks who may come and visit our homes. And, and and although we tell them we are not interested, they try to force and force and force themselves on us. And I was saying to the others, that is not, that is not Jesus's way. Jesus's way. In fact, I think in the gospel, he tell you, dust off your feet and move on. Mm -hmm. no but, um, but, but, but basically, if no, if the person is not open to the scriptures, we just need to move on to somebody else who is willing to receive them. But don't try to force it on others. And so we see um, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea, and when they arrived there, if they didn't get if they didn't get the lesson the first time, they didn't get it the second time. They gone back into another synagogue. <laughs> so they they leave Thessalonica from a synagogue, and now they're gone to Berea into another synagogue. And if you have have and if you if you have ever heard about the church called the Berean Church or the Berean Bible Church, that is where the word Berean comes from, from this city of Berea. Um, uh, and and then we go into verse eleven, and we see now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, Thessalonians, sorry, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. This is a very, for me, this is a very important verse. And it was interesting that one member of the, of the, of the group this morning pointed that out. And he was saying that he has never seen it explained like this in the Bible, where people really went about examining the scriptures to see what someone is saying is true. And I said that to them, and I said that to them, even when I preach, you should go and examine and see if it's true. Mm -hmm. That is how you learn. That is how you are better able to embrace the word. Um, because you yourself is not only taking it from what someone said, 
but you have seen it and read it yourself. And it makes you more into a believer, a faithful believer. If and, you just and they're talking if, about like basically the Old Testament when they're talking about the scriptures. Um, and, and no, and and well, yes, yes, the Old and Testament, more. but but also, but also too, but also too, um, um, by that time, they would have been. They would have known about Jesus. So they would have been looking at places like the book of Isaiah and so forth, that where the promised Messiah was to come. And they would have been examining that kind of information, right. Rhonda. Yes. Correct. Um, it's old fashioned fact checking. Yes. Right. And we and we should all be doing that. We should not just take it at its word. Um, uh, you, 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 I mean, you know, you, you've heard, I mean, the Bible talks about so, false prophets. Why would you, you, so how do you know if a person is false or not, unless you do your own examination, your own studying? That is why it is important to do that kind of studying. Mm -hmm. Um, and not just to take it as, 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 as my mother will say, don't take it as if it's the gospel, make sure right. it is. <laughs> you know, um, um, that is what you should do. So, so that verse eleven in chapter seventeen is a very powerful verse mm -hmm. um, because it is an it sets an example for what all of us should be doing. That yes, we are persuaded. Yes, and um, we 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 like what we hear, but we want to make sure what we're hearing is true and we're not being fooled and then and then you will see here and in, in the very next verse verse 12 many of the jews believe so you 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 fact check you you realize it true there comes your belief many believe as did also a number of prominent greek women and many greek men so here you see both jews and gentiles believing because they went about studying and examining and trying to make sure that this was true. Um, where am I? Verse 13. And when the Jews in Thessalonica uh, learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Berea, they went there too, agitated the crowds and stirring them up. So if you thought that the Thessalonians <laughs> were going to let up, they're not. Mm. There, there are. They even leave where they are to try to thwart um, what was going on in Berea uh, because they wanted as much as possible to kill this whole movement, which Paul and Silas and and Peter had started, and all that kind of good stuff. But the, but the, uh, and the thing about it is, is that you know when they say that they that the Bereans were more noble. It meant that they were more welcoming. They were more, more fair-minded. They were, you know, they were more open-minded to what Paul and Silas were, were were preaching and talking about, as opposed to um, the the Thessalonian the Thessalonian church. Um. So 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 you see that as a result of this. Uh, you will see that Paul also had to leave Berea. It goes on to say the brothers, in uh, 14, the brothers immediately sent Paul to the coast. Silas and Timothy. Father, if you don't talk into the microphone, we can't hear yeah. you. You, you, you. Yeah, that's because I shifted to read. That's why. Um, and that's because I don't have my headset on. I'm sorry. Um, the bro Thank you, though, Marilyn. The brothers immediately sent Paul to the, to the coast, but Silas and Timothy stayed at Berea. The men who escorted Paul brought him to Athens and then left with instructions for Silas and Timothy to join him as soon as possible. So, so you see, Paul goes off to Berea, Berea. He leaves Silas and he leaves Timothy to help ground the new um, converts that were there. And then um, he will wait to follow them. For them to follow him, so 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 he left word for them to join him as soon as it was possible for them to do so. 
But then when we get to verse 16, you see here that when Paul, while Paul was waiting for them, meaning Paul, meaning Silas and um and, and Timothy, when while Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. What was Paul doing? Sightseeing. Sightseeing. Paul was sightseeing. That's he was he while he was waiting for Silas and for and for Timothy to come, he was walking around the city sightseeing he was a tourist that's what he was he was he was touring around and 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 that's how he was able to realize my gosh this place is full of idols um um uh, they 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 and we know as we have heard about Athens in Greece you know there's good architecture and sculpture and all that good stuff art and all that good stuff but also what he saw was, that they were steeped in idolatry. Who could tell me what was the other thing that they were steeped in? Philosophy. Philosophy, correct. He, he, they were they were steeped in philosophy. So 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 Athens was known for its idols and its philosophers. Um, and the streets the streets in Athens uh, would have been lying with both Greek gods and Roman gods. And, and and as we continue reading, uh, you will see that there was, you know, just like how we have in the in 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 um, Arlington Seminary, Cemetery, a, a, a grave is marked to the unknown soldier. Well, they've got a statue to the unknown God, and <laughs> and you see that you see that coming out there, um, um, in verse seventeen. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews. Uh, and the God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace day and day, day and by day, with those who happen to be there. So again, you see, Paul is arguing with the Jews again, with the God-fearing Gentiles um, in the marketplace. And then in verse 18, you, you see, you read, a group of Epicurean and Stoic philosophers began to dispute with him. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seems to be advocating foreign gods. They said this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the, well, we like to say Arapagus, but it's Arapagus, um, uh, where they said to him, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting. You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears, and we want to know what they mean. All the Athenians uh, and the foreigners who lived there spent their time doing nothing but talking about and listening to the latest ideas. So here we have the whole notion of philosophy. And if you have, if you know anything about these two groups of philosophers, the Epicureans and the Stoics, there were two polar opposites, complete polar opposites. Um, the Epicureans, they were really atheists. They were the atheists of the day. They did not believe in God. They believed that the world happened by accident. Um, all they were about, all they were about was to enjoy life, have pleasure. Uh, that was the main purpose of their lives. And when you're dead, that's it. You're done. There's nothing more to life after after you leave this this after you die. And that was the Epicurean philosophy. Um, whereas the Stoic philosophy was completely 180 degree turn. Um, they were the ones who claimed that God was in everything and everyone. Their lives were centered strictly on God. Um, they did not believe in an immortality of the soul, um, um, but, they, but that if one would live a life of excellence, moral excellence, they will be swallowed up into deity when they die. They, 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 they felt that, they, um, they, that, you, that you live your life in a virtuous way as opposed to how the Epicureans felt you should live your life, a life of pleasure. And, and and as you know, there are people who are like that today. They may not call themselves Epicureans and Stoic philosophers, <laughs> but that's how they live. 
there are some people who think, well, after this life, there's nothing, so I can live it as much as I like and as pleasurable as I like. And there are others who feel that they, they, they will live for God. Not that you can live a pleasurable life for God. I don't know why they think, but their pleasure is going beyond what is expected of people who who, who have a relationship with God. Um, so just imagine, and if you have any idea of how Greek, how Greece or Athens would have been, philosophers used to be in a marketplace just going at each other. And so just imagine these two sets of philosophers who are completely polar opposites going at each other uh, over topics about God and death and this sort of and this sort of a a a a a thing. Um, but here comes along Paul, and Paul is using something different. Um, Paul is saying something differently to them that they have never heard about. Um, um, uh, they, they, they tend they tend to see him as advocating for foreign gods, even 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 gods that they are not accustomed, gods that they are not accustomed to, and and but all the, all Paul was doing was preaching about Jesus, and preaching about the the, the resurrection. But but Paul does something. Um, but, but when they asked him to, when they brought him to the uh, the the um, um, what this what this new when they asked him what this new teaching was or is that he was presenting, and um, it sounded um, foreign to them, Paul used. Paul used a beautiful tactic to talk about God and Jesus. And what he does is, is that he 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 refers to them to the to the statue to the that says that has the inscription to an unknown God. And he uses that uh phrase that they have in Athens to talk to tell them the unknown God is the living God. And he used that, he, he doesn't argue with them. He just, he just brings that in beautifully. In verse 22, Paul then stood up in the meeting um, of the Arachopas and said, men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. He even plays on that term with them, that you're very religious. For as I walk around and look carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar that with which the, with the inscription to an unknown God. Now what you worship as something unknown, I am going to proclaim to you. And this is where he takes that unknown God concept that is on the altar and tells them about God and Christ. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth. And does not live in temples built by hands, and he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything, because he himself gives all people life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men, of people, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that people will seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image made by man's design and skill. So, so here, Paul uses the opportunity by them having this altar to an unknown God to use it as this is the God that that's that is the unknown God that you don't know about and 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 it it, it was a brilliant way of doing it um uh one of the things though we we would we must say uh about Paul is is that the philosophers felt um that he was you, you know what a seed picker is 
Seed picker now. Seed picker. You know, like a bird goes and picks seeds from all over the place and bring them together and yeah. make it into whatever, um, uh, like a nest or whatever the case may be. Well, a, a seed picker is normally someone who takes little bits and pieces from all over different places and make their mm -hmm. own philosophy. And and so the, the philosophers back then would have thought of, of, of Paul as some kind of, when they when refer to the word as babbler, um, it would have been like the same thing as a seed picker where um, um, he, he, he did not, um, he took parts from all sorts of places to, 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 pre, to more or less pretend that he has a knowledge of something else. Um, but one of the things that we also need to realize about it is, is that um, Paul, uh, Paul's ministry in Athens uh, was not very successful. And, 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 and the reason being, too, you have to remember that, I mean, he's a human being. Um, the fact that he faced a lot of comp competition um, 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 in terms of all these idols that they had in Athens, you can see, you can see coming out of Athens, um, there were no people, you don't hear God adding to the number of the church. Uh, you don't hear anybody be coming, being converted. The most you hear, the most you hear is, um, is that some poets know that we, that they were God's offspring. And then when you come down to the end, uh, if we go at verse 30 and following, it says in the past, God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent. For he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all people by raising him from the dead. And when they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them swear, sneer, but others said, we want to hear you again on this subject. At that, Paul left the council, and a few men became followers of Paul and believe. Among them was Denisius, a man, a member of the of the of Aracopas, Aracopas, also a woman named Damaris, and a number of others. So there were not that many people who converted um, to Christianity, um, and as you see, it is left there in this chapter open ended where these philosophers want to hear more from Paul on this topic that he was preaching about and teaching about. Um, um, but apart from that, you don't hear much happening um, um, with Paul um, as, as, far as, as far as with Athens. He's going to move on now to Corinth, um, where he's going to form the church there. Um, I sent you, did you all get the 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 um, attachment I sent today talking about the change? Well, I sent that because um, you will find there, um, if you hear about Mars Hill, I sent you a picture of what was the um, old time looking Mars Hill and what Mars Hill looked like today, um, where the um, Arrakis, Arrakis, Oropagus would have would have been, um, and and uh, in Athens before Paul moved on to Corinth, and then I sent you two maps which showed you the the second missionary journey of Paul, where all of these different places that he has been mm -hmm. going to, so you can see you can see on the maps where he was in chapter seventeen um, in in Berea and in Athens. And, and those places. So I just wanted you uh, to see, you, and you can see where he left uh, Thessalonica and went on to Berea, which was the next place over, not too far. But then he came right down to Athens, which was pretty much far away um, from, from Berea. So I, I just wanted to share that those maps with you so that you can see what his second journey looked like. And, and then you will see him cross over into Corinth is the next place you would go. Any questions? Yes. Yes, George. Uh, would the philosophers in Athens have been familiar with the Old Testament, with the Torah? Well, yeah. um, in, in Greece, 
that's a good one because you have to remember that they, pro they, they, they could have been. I am not sure how to answer that because one, there would have been Gentiles. Um, um, so they would not have been Jews. Um, and, and the Old Testament, the Hebrew scriptures were really Jewish scriptures. Um, so it is, I, I, I don't know how to answer that one for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, I could see if I could find out that, but I don't know how to answer. I, I don't remember if I've ever discovered if they were, if they knew that or not. Um, and I'm not saying they didn't, but, but obviously if they did, um, they were not sure well, they did not study it because, I mean, the Old Testament also talks talks about Jesus is coming and and what and 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 what will happen to him. The Book of Isaiah talks about that. So either they did not understand it, they did not know about it, or they just simply ignored it. But they weren't familiar with it. Hmm? Well, they weren't familiar with it. Or they weren't familiar with it. But I I I am not sure of that one, George. But it's a good question. But I'm not sure. So you're just, you're, ask, you're asking George about the people in Athens. No, yeah. George was asking me if the philosophers in Athens would have known about about the Old Testament. Right, right. The, they're Hebrew not scriptures. Jewish. Right, right, right. Which is what I told him. They were they were yeah. being Gentiles. Um, right. So, you know, well, and the other part of that is that even if they knew about it, they weren't interested in it because of all the idols that were going on and all that sort of stuff right. in place. They really were not interested in him, in God, uh, but at least not the Jewish God. So uh, my my bet will be that they didn't, or if they did, they just ignored it. It seems like, you know, when Paul went to the, the temple, the, the Jewish synagogue, Mm -hmm. You know, he had a common frame of reference with those folks, mm -hmm. the Old True. Testament. True. And when mm -hmm. he went here to Athens, I mean, it was just kind of his opinion. And Correct. Correct. And that is true. And that is true. Um, it doesn't seem like he, it, now he does, we don't know exactly what happened, but it doesn't seem like he's working miracles here. He's just. Mm -hmm using the the scripture and, and that's why and that and and you are right and that's why i said his me, his message was not successful in athens if you remember i said earlier he's a human being too so sometimes you you don't be you know it's like a priest he might be successful in one parish but not in another um and, and it's the same thing that happened to him he was his ministry was not successful his ministry is oftentimes considered not successful in athens based on the fact that nothing happens. But you you have made a good connection in that there were no synagogues to go to. Um, um, the same way, um, um, uh, the, like how there was in Berea or in Thessalonica. And even although they were in Thessalonica, he didn't fare very well there either. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he, he, he fared better in Berea until the Thessalonians came. <laughs> and, uh, 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 cause an uprising again so so yes you are correct in terms of how he did not have the base he did not have the synagogue base bless you but you would also but you will also you will also realize that that will happen as we go forward because he is going to enter into gentile world territory where there is no where there was no synagogues and 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 you know he's going to have to really show his worth. You know? mm -hmm. So so as I said, you're gonna you're gonna see him now um, um, coming into to Corinth, and then the next thing I think the next phase I think he he will be is in in Ephesus, which again is a, is where the letter to the Ephesians come from. Um, so you were you are going to see. You you are going to see that happening going forward. Yes, this ministry where, will improve. Where he's got to have to prove his worth. Yeah, yeah. At least, as George said correctly, um, the Jews knew about the Messiah coming, although they didn't think Jesus was the Messiah. 
um, or at least some of them, they think he was the Messiah. At least some of them believe and converted, but some of them still did not, up to this day, don't believe mm -hmm. the Messiah has come as yet. They're still looking for him. Because they have their own perceived, first preconceived ideas. Yes, um, Marilyn. I believe you have another meeting. It's 623. Yeah, I, I watched the time. Actually, the notification came up on my screen. So I just came. You're like my notification. It just came up like 30, like 15 seconds ago. <laughs> yeah, but I'll be fine. I'll be fine. I'll be fine. Any any other questions? No. No other questions? No. Well, just make sure you read chapter 18. We'll go into um, um, Paul in, in, in Corinth. And see how that and see how that plays out. And one of the things about we have to look at the book of the, the Acts of the Apostles is that the Acts of the Apostles, when you really come to think about it, if we were to look at the real historical aspect of the church um, in in the kind of a commentary commentary kind of way, this is it. After the Acts. All you have is just letters. Mm -hmm. um, all the rest of the book is letters. Of the Bible is letters. Um, with the exception of Revelation. Uh, but all the rest of the of, of the Bible after this are letters. So you just got Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. Which deals with what actually happened in terms of the historical aspect. Now, that is not to say the letters don't have that kind of thing too, because it does. They they do, but it but but it is it is told through the penmanship of Paul, um, based on what he has heard going on, and based on what he has, uh, and based on what he expected of them, and 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 so um, you will see that from the letters. But in terms of going through a kind of a historical aspect of, you know, he sailed here, he went there, he did this, he didn't do this. Um, you you have that um, acts, the acts more or less summarizes that whole mm -hmm. journey. Journey. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Iris. So basically on the road to Damascus when he was chosen, mm -hmm. he was chosen because he was a learned, he was a writer, he obviously- mm -hmm. He was, was a bright man. Yes, he was a bright man. Mm -hmm. well, he was a bright man. Yeah. And and also to and in ter in terms of being chosen, he would have been chosen. You see, that's why I, I mean he would have been chosen to um yes for for his intelligence, but 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 who better? You know, we have the saying, you keep your friends closer, you you keep your enemy, no, you keep your Enemies close. Friends close and your enemies closer. closer. I think that's what it says, right? You keep your friends close and your enemies close closer. Enemy. And yeah. Paul was an enemy. Yeah. Uh, so what better way than to bring him on to your side? And and that is what God in Christ did. Oh, yeah. Um, 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 turn him around. Um, and uh, and then I say to, and I, I say to people all the time that you know, if Paul can be converted and become a good man, anybody can be converted. <laughs> Thank you, Father. <laughs> All right, I gotta go. It's six twenty-seven. Okay. Have a good night, everyone, and thank bye -bye. you for coming. Bye. 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 Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you.